Hi, I'm Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com and um, today I'm going to show you an experiment uh, in process. If it doesn't work, I won't put this video up. <laughs> a couple of years ago, I think it was, I told everybody on my blog I'm starting a baby rhino and I got to the point where I had the, the pattern made and the armature kind of going and then I started putting crumpled paper and masking tape on it uh, trying to get the the folds in the right place and then they would be in the wrong place and I'd move them and I worked on it for probably two or three weeks and then I said okay this is really boring <laughs> I put it in the compost pile Steve Sack uh, came up with a really nice uh, baby rhino uh, that week I didn't um, I just I just kind of it was too much so this was my attempt to get a rhino faster. Um, it, clay's just more intuitive, so it goes faster. And because I'm not trying for you know um, photo exactness, um, I think this is going to work. And the way I did it, I cobbled together a um, inside armature with some um, foam board that was left over from the people who used to live in the house, and then I just added a bunch of stuff to it, um, basically some um, scrap paper and little pieces of foam and stuff just to fill out enough space so that I didn't have to use too much clay. Then I went ahead and added at least two inches, uh, I'm sorry, at least a half an inch um, of wet clay, just pottery clay, uh, to the form. Um, once the clay was on there and I had uh, the basic shapes, that's all I was looking for, just the basic shapes, um, I went ahead and covered that with plastic. Um, plastic will stick to wet clay. It doesn't stick to plastic and it doesn't stick to wet plastic, but it will stick to plastic that has some of the clay slip brushed over it. So um, what I did, um, before the plastic went on, I brushed off the clay uh, with a wet brush just to smooth things out a little bit and then I had that slip on the brush so when I had to cut some of the plastic to um, get it to fit uh, and two pieces of plastic had to fold over each other I just brushed that slip on there and, and smoothed it out. So I ended up with a thing that looked kind of like this um, and after that I covered it with about six rolls of plaster cloth. This is four inch, I think it's by five yards. Uh, it's a med medical grade plaster cloth that I got from brickintheyard.com. Um, they've got some really good videos on how to use plaster cloth, so if you want to know how to do that, I am not the expert, they know how. Um, go check on YouTube, do a, a search for their channel, and they've got some fantastic videos out there. Um, after this um, plaster cloth has been cut off and I pull it out and I pull all the clay out of it, I'll put it back together with more plaster cloth just on the, on the seams and then I'll cover it with the new air dried clay recipe. Um, so it's not going to be expensive. Hopefully it'll turn out okay. <laughs> we'll see. I'm just going to mark this to see where I should cut it. I don't have to worry about undercuts because the clay is soft. Okay, moment of truth. We're going to see if I can get this off. It's been um, curing for not very long, probably only an hour, so if I had left it a whole lot longer, probably would be better, but I'm impatient and I want to find out if it works. Cutting down through the plastic and into the clay with a very sharp box cutter. There are two layers, by the way. I always um, put two, um, take two pieces of, of plaster cloth together rather than uh, rather than putting on a, a layer and. Um, and then putting on another layer. They always always put two pieces on at the same time and rub it on really good. Like I said, I'm not the, not the expert on plaster cloth, but um, that's the way they told us to do over at the uh, Brick in the Yard people. Uh, they seem to know what they're doing, so I followed their advice. 
Now, if you do this, by the way, you probably be smarter than I am and put some plastic down on your table. <laughs> Putting it on the floor would be a good idea too. This is a really messy process. <laughs> now also I suppose it's obvious that if you have a, a, a clay sculpture that you've been working on for a long time, it's got a lot of detail on it, you want to capture it perfectly, this isn't going to work. Um, it only works to get general shapes. If I ever do this again, I will go back around and reinforce the area where I know I'm going to be making a cut. Because that's it's a little bit too flimsy. Oops! I missed a spot. Darn. Huh, how did that happen? Well, I have to fix that before I can go any further. I went ahead and, and fixed that spot that was missing a piece. It said clay showing. And I went ahead and reinforced the edges since I had to wait for that to dry anyway. Put this down carefully. Now you're probably wondering why I went to all the trouble with the plastic. Because I could have just um, sprayed this with some uh, cooking oil or something, used some petroleum jelly. Um, the reason I didn't do that is because I, I don't want plaster in the clay. Uh, wet clay is really cheap. Like this, this is. I don't know, maybe $12 worth of clay. Um, but the gas to go get the clay is not cheap. And the closest pottery supply store is 50 miles away. So I wanted to be able to um, just take this plastic off and put my clay back in the plastic bag and, and be able to use it again. I didn't, didn't want to have to throw it out because it's full of plaster. After I pull all this plastic off, I will put the clay back in a nice plastic bag. I put aluminum foil over the scraps of paper and masking tape and all that stuff just so that the paper on the inside of the armature wouldn't dry out the clay from the inside. <clears throat> it's about 40 pounds lighter now, so I should be able to pull, let's see how many of these, maybe if I just pull these off. Using two pieces of plaster cloth. Oops. The parts that had the most problems were underneath where it was really hard to get to and really hard to hold onto them long enough so that they would stick to the to the belly. So I had to repair a little bit of that, and also right here underneath her um, nose, I have to be repaired. <sighs> okay, he's all put back together. I used, um, I think, three or four more rolls of the plaster cloth. So altogether, there's eight uh, rolls of plaster cloth in this. Um, medical grade plaster cloth so it's really strong. Um, it looked flimsy when I was working with it today because I, I took it apart when it was still uh, really wet. Especially down here because you know the water 
flows downhill. I, I tested it up here. It was strong enough when I pulled it apart, and, and it was still really damp down at the bottom. Uh, but he's all put together now, hollow, weighs what, maybe three or four pounds. I was thinking about filling it with uh, expanding foam. I was actually going to do that today. I know I have some in the house. It's down in the basement someplace. I don't know where it is. I can't find it. Um, but he's feeling really solid now because he's been reinforced on, on all those um, uh, cut lines. And I'm thinking he may not need it. I know that the, the new air dry clay recipe works really good over plaster cloth because that's how I'm making my doll heads. Um, but they're really small <laughs> and round to start with. Um, you can drop them on the floor and they don't break. Obviously you don't need to drop a rhino on the floor and, and sculptures don't have to be unbreakable but you still... Um, I was concerned that if it didn't have anything on the inside that maybe it would um, be subject to um, denting or something. Um, I should be able to tell by the time this is dry and by the time that the um, uh, air dry clay over it is dry, it should be really obvious at that point. And if at that point it still looks like it needs uh, reinforcing from the inside, I'll go ahead and put in some um, expanding foam. You could, if you wanted to take the time to let it dry, uh, you obviously could use um, just paper mache over the clay. A lot of people have done that and it works just fine. I was in a hurry. <laughs> I wanted something now. So. Um, anyway, that's enough for today. Hope you come and visit me. Um, I'm at ultimatepapermache.com. Bye-bye.